Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're finally gonna go over all of my limited edition Blu-rays, my top 10 limited edition Blu-rays from 2021. It was a long time coming. I'm sorry that I made you guys wait so long. I know a few of you that still enjoy my Blu-ray content have been asking this for quite some time. So I'm finally gonna go over it today. And there's actually a bunch of Blu-ray videos coming soon because I'm not only gonna do my limited edition anime Blu-ray releases. Tonight I'm also filming my top 10 steel books from 2021 and my top 10 premiums from 2021. So last year I did get into premium editions. If you don't know what those are, you will see them. You will see that video come out in a few days, maybe weeks. I don't know if I wanna release them all in this week or if I wanna space them out and release one every week for this month. But don't wanna get sidetracked. Today we're gonna to go straight into the anime limited edition Blu-rays, which are my favorite things to collect. And before we get started, I'm gonna go into a little dishonorable mention right here. And this is the only dishonorable mention. There's not many that I don't like. And it is this Neon Genesis Evangelion. If you guys saw my review of this one, you guys know that I really did not like this edition. Uh, there was a lot of issues with it. There was like, um, it has that problem where the paper is starting to sort of peel off of the cardboard underneath it, which I hate it whenever there's sets that do that. And this one has a lot of it, but not only that, I don't know. I just think the design is pretty boring um, based off some of the images that I've seen for this series. For example, the ultimate edition, or I don't know what it's called. The one that uh, Prof Otaku unboxed. If you guys haven't seen that, I'll link it up here. Really good video, but that was a great edition. If they just used one of those art prints on here, it would have made this limited edition much better, but no, they decided to go with these hexagons here, which I don't know. I haven't seen the anime yet, so I don't know what those signify. But yeah, this is my only dishonorable mention. Let's move on to the top 10. All right, so in at number 10 is this Poila Madoka Magica, the movie trilogy by Aniplex. Uh, Aniplex sometimes just goes with a simple design and I don't mind them. I mean, I do like this set. I do think it's a really nice set. It's just a little too plain for me and they did go with sort of this flimsy cardboard instead of the hard cardboard that some of the more premium limited editions use. Uh, but overall, I still do really like this. It is still in the top 10. It is not a dishonorable mention. I still do like this set. I think Madoka looks really cute here and QB, I don't remember his name actually to be honest, but I haven't seen Madoka Magica in a while, but I think he looks really cute there as well. The back looks pretty nice as well. It's really simple, but I think it works. The black on white looks really cool. And I always love the Aniplex clear cases here. And the artwork used on here is also really nice. So yeah, like I said, not a bad set, but it is at my number 10 spot. And at number nine, we got a My Hero Academia set last year. I feel like it's been a while since we got one of these limited editions, but this one was released and I did showcase it last year. And while I do love all these limited editions and I think they do look nice on the shelf, they're all really colorful on the shelf. I really do like them. Uh, this is probably my least favorite of all of the My Hero Academia sets. I don't know why, I just don't like the artwork that they went here on the front or on the back. Considering this has the overhaul storyline in it, I think they could have gone with an artwork of Midoriya versus overhaul, but they decided to go with this part, the second part of this, the fourth season, which was honestly my least favorite part of the series. I much preferred that first part where they fought against overhaul. So yeah, uh, that's why I was a little bit disappointed with this set, but it still is a nice set. You do have some nice embossing. Uh, the artwork is nice. It's just not my favorite, but um, as a set on the shelf with all of the other My Hero Academia sets, I think it looks nice. But for this list, it is at number nine. And at number eight, we got another Aniplex release. Oh, and I actually have this one backwards. This is actually the front, but yeah, that's one thing I like about these uh, Sword Art Online sets is that the front and the back both all have really nice artwork. And this one has one of the best of the Sword Art Online limited edition sets. So I really do like this set, but it is at number nine. Uh, just because it just has nice artwork. There's nothing special that they're doing with it. There's no, no embossing, there's no foil, there's no debossing, none of, nothing like that. Uh, so that's the reason why it's at number eight. It's a really nice set. Um, the cardboard is a little bit sturdy. It's not the sturdiest, but it's kind of like in the mid range. So it is a nice box set. It's just a little too simple, which is why this one is at number eight. And at number seven, we have Plunderer. Now, some people might say that the Sword Art Online artwork was better, which you might be right. I think the artwork might be a little bit better, but this is a Funimation release and they do always do something a little bit special with their releases. And in this case, 
I don't know, I just love the way that this uh, gold foil looks here on the title. Plunderer here on the top right, Plunderer here on the spine, and then they do have some on the back as well on that top corner. I just think it looks really elegant, really nice. They also have it, they kind of have it all over the box. On the top and on the bottom, I think that's the only place we don't have some, but we do have some artwork all around the box set and I do think the artwork is also pretty nice. So yeah, I'm a sucker for this type of stuff, which is why this one is just slightly above that Sword Art on Light limited edition release. But this is the simplest of the Funimation set, so we do have more, but because it's the simplest, this one made it to the number seven spot. All right, and at number six, we got another Funimation release. You can see that this one does a little bit more as far as the special additions that they do to their box sets. And here they do have this sort of faint holographic effect behind the characters and sort of all over the box set. And I think it looks really cool. And as well, I don't know, I just like the pink color. I don't know why, I really like pink limited editions. Um, I also really like My First Girlfriend is a Gal, which is all pink and glittery, similar to this one. But yeah, other than that holographic effect, it's that's pretty much all this set has going for it. Uh, the characters here are pretty simple. They do look cute, but it is pretty simple cover here. Here's the spine. We do have them in their chibi forms, which is pretty cute. And then on the back, we just have two other characters. So overall, a simple, nice limited edition with a good effect there on the background. So yeah, that's why this one is at number six. Right now, these next two really could go back and forth. I actually switched these last minute just now as I'm filming this. But for my top five, I'm gonna have to go with this these sets right here. And it is the Fate Stay Night Heaven's Feel Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3. Now, uh, officially, the one that released last year, I believe, is Part 3. I don't know if Part 2 was also part of 2021, but I do know for sure that Part 3 was. I just wanted to show these three off as a set because they are beautiful additions. Now, again, this, these are Aniplex. The one thing that I don't like about these is that Aniplex, for their films, they actually make their box sets a little bit taller than the standard Blu-ray cases, which I really dislike because they don't look nice on the shelf. I can't put them next to my other Fate Stay Night series. But other than that, I still do really like these sets, and it did make it to my top five. I love the covers to each of these. The spines do use that foil. This, In this case, it's silver foil, which looks really nice. It has a nice little effect there. Kind of hard to see here with the paper wrapping on it. I'm not gonna take it off for this video just because it is kind of a pain, but I do have unboxings for this one. If you guys haven't seen my unboxing, I'll link it up here for you guys to check that out. But um, another reason that I put this one pretty high up there is just because of the art books. The art books for each of these are really good. They have some of the best artwork in any of the art books that I have for last year. Uh, so that also did contribute to where it is in my top 10 list here. But yep, this is my number five. Let's move on to my number four spot. By the way, I love these films. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch them. I don't think you need to watch any of the other stuff if you don't want to, but go watch these films. These are my favorite of the Fate series so far. All right, so this is the one that got swapped last minute, but for now, uh, this is my number four spot. I do have the Demon Slayer Mugen Train film. This is the Japanese limited edition. So I do have the Japanese characters here on the spine and sort of all over this limited edition, which I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of put it above the Fate Stay Night. I don't know why, I just think it looks really cool and it fits really well with Demon Slayer. So that's just one of the reasons that it itched it just slightly above the Fate Stay Night series. Uh, the other reason is actually the set inside. I really love how it looks. There's a really nice artwork that you see when you open this set up. Um, again, I won't show it here, but if you guys want to take a look at that, I'll leave a link up here to my video unboxing of this one. But that is probably the main reason that I put this one above the Fate Stay Night series. And if you guys go see my video, you guys will understand why I just put it slightly above Fate Stay Night. But yeah, this will be my number four spot. So now let's move into the top three limited editions of 2021, in my opinion. All right, so these next two are actually ones that I unboxed in 2022, but I did receive them and I did or they did ship in 2021. I just have been slacking a little bit on my Blu-ray videos. I still have a few that I need to unbox from 2021, but I wanted to give this video out. I wanted to put this video out for you guys, so those will be considered for 2022 list. Um, but 
At number three, we have Radiant. I just unboxed this one a few weeks ago, and the reason it's at number three is because I love the, I don't know, you can't really see it here, but I love what they did here. I talked about it in the video, but they have the background as glossy, and the actual picture of the character and his and his Rasen gun is what I'll call it right now, is a matte finish, and I think it just gives off a really cool effect. I feel like it's not getting captured too well on the camera, but I don't know, I really do like this one, which is why I put it at number three. Again, it's just me being picky with what they do with their limited edition. Uh, so again, those Aniplex editions didn't have too many stuff on them. They just had really nice covers, really nice editions. But in this case, they did go that extra mile to add those extra effects. So same thing here, background over here is all glossy. And these two main characters here are matte finish. I think it adds a really cool effect. The main reason it also made it to this far up in the list is this art book right here. Um, I did rave about this in the in my video review as well. First of all, it's a hardcover. Funimation sometimes, most of the time, doesn't make hardcover art books recently, but this one is a hard book and it is really nice. But what I really love is the paper quality. So all of the pages in here are glossy and they feel really nice. So I really love that. And that's why this one made it all the way to my number three spot. All right, at number two, we have Fire Force, our last Funimation set. And this one made it pretty high up on the list. I don't remember Fire Force making it this high last year, but that just goes to show that I don't think there was that many. I mean, there I loved all these limited editions, but I do think 2020 had some bangers limited editions like that Violet Evergarden. We had the Food Wars. We had a lot of great stuff. This year, it's more of your standard limited editions, but this is definitely one of my favorites. I also loved season one. I love all of the effects they put in here. So this one has a bunch of stuff going for it. So we have some foil, but I don't know, this foil looks really cool on the sword as well as on the firefighting gear here on the characters and on the flame effects from this main character. I don't know his name. I haven't seen this yet, but a Apart from that, we also got sort of like this blood splatter all throughout the background of the limited edition, which I think looks really cool. I do really like this set and I do think it's the best Funimation set out of all of the ones that I showed here on this video. But yeah, it's basically the same all the way throughout. And this image here on the back is also really cool looking. I love the way this looks. Now it doesn't have a really awesome art book or anything like that. So this one made it at the number two spot based solely on the limited edition set, the artwork and everything on the outer box. Uh, so yeah, that's my number two spot. Now let's move into number one. Can you guys guess what it is? Do you guys remember my Blu-ray videos? Take a guess right now before I showcase the number one spot and we'll see if you get it right here in a bit. All right, so as always, Sintai makes it up top at my number one spot for 2021 once again. Um, I bet you guys thought it was Food Wars set four, but that one actually released and was shipped in 2022. So that's not a 2021 release, even though I did put out a video recently on that. It was released in 2022. Um, but no, my number one spot for 2021 is this K-On! Limited Edition set. Now, now there is a caveat to this one because this one was actually not officially released in 2021, but it was out of stock and it was going for ridiculous prices and randomly one, I forget what it was, there was some holiday and since I had a limited release of this set once again and they limited it to one day, if I remember correctly, and everyone could only buy one set. And believe me, I tried, I actually tried to buy two because you know me, I always like to resell stuff and I knew that this one was gonna go back out of print, but nope, they only let me buy one. So that's why I'm considering this one as a 2020 run release because of that exclusive re-release by Sentai Filmworks. And yeah, I love this set. I think it's a really cool set. I love how creative Sentai Filmworks gets with their sets. In this case, we do have some sort of instrument case, which I think is really cool. Yeah, I'm assuming it's from one of the characters because it has a bunch of stickers all around it. We have some drawings here on the front, some more stickers on the back, and then this picture here on the back. So. So yeah, like I said, I'm just a sucker for these type of sets. I love it when studios get creative with them. And even then, even when you open it up, it still keeps getting better. You have some nice artwork in here as well. 
All of the Blu-ray sets have some nice artwork. Um, so overall, just a great release by Sentai Filmworks. And I'm really glad that I was able to pick this one up. Again, if you guys wanna see an unboxing of this one to show everything off, I will leave a link for that up here. Although I don't know, I may have run out of links. Who knows? I'll figure out once I start editing. But yeah, that's my top 10. Let me know what you guys think of my top 10 list. Do you guys agree? Uh, did I miss anything? Let me know what your top 10 limited edition releases are of 2021. If you guys collect Blu-rays. But yeah, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you guys like Blu-ray videos, check out these videos over here to the right, and I'll see you guys on the next one.